when you're talking about the manipulability ellipsoid, sorry, do you mind if we continue? We already have seen that x transpose x equal 1 is the equation of a sphere. Let us just see for two, two elements. This is equivalent to x1, x2 multiplied x1, x2 equal 1. And uh, I think you should have studied uh, at high school that this is a sphere, okay? And this is simply a different representation of the sphere, the simplest one. However, we can uh, also represent an ellipse with a similar quadratic form. The quadratic form here is x transpose multiplied by certain weight matrix, uh, and for convenience uh, we write uh, w and minus 1, the inverse of, the, of w, x equal 1. In this case, we have uh, a, an ellipse in two dimension or a, an, an ellipsoid in a generic n dimension. And what is important is that uh, the weight matrix embeds the properties of the ellipse. In particular, the eigenvectors of W, uh, W transpose are the principal axis directions. The eigenvalues are the, of, uh, are the principal axis dimension. It means that uh, this weight matrix can be used to shape the ellipse, okay? If we want to write an ellipse. But now we are going to use it on the other way because we are going to read some properties of our manipulator. Let us see how. If I consider the back, the, the the locus of all the points with the same joint velocity norms. It means that uh, I'm considering all the points of a sphere that is represented by, by this equation. Okay? Well, I know that uh, the end effect of linear velocity linear and angular velocity, I'm sorry, is related uh, to the joint velocity via geometric Jacobian, okay? That can be inverted with the full run Jacobian by the self inverse of the Jacobian. It means that uh, I can write uh, something that uh, is uh, Q dot transpose Q dot, uh, and I can write this guy here, and uh, just by substitution, okay? Just by substitution. And here I uh, have self inverse E and the same but transpose. Transpose, and this is equal to transpose. J, transpose, uh, J, sorry. J, J, inverse, E, E. Now, I know the symbolic expression of the pseudo inverse. I substitute here, and uh, this one gives me j, j transpose minus one, okay? By substitution. 
always equal one. Okay, so that's nice because this means that an ellipsoid. But what is the, the, the meaning of, of, of this operation? Let us start from uh, here. We have taken all the points of a sphere that exhibit the same property. The norm of the joint velocity is the same and is unitary. Now we want to see how this sphere maps into the end effector linear and angular velocity. And it uh, comes out that the sphere in the joint velocity appears to be an ellipsoid in the end effector generalized velocities. And this ellipsoid is characterized by semi-axis and uh, length and direction that are given by the geometric Jacobian. The geometric Jacobian embeds the information on how I do map the velocities from the joint to the end effector, not only in a punctual way, but also in this, let me say, geometric way. So this sphere is mapped into an ellipsoid. And uh, let us try to what does it mean uh, graphically? Let, let us try to continue the interpretation. N equal to just I mean to have uh, a, a draw. I'm taking all the point of the sphere that N is equal to all the points of uh, uh, the, the, the circumference, okay? And uh, those are mapped are mapped into an ellipsoid. For example, an ellipsoid with the center in the origin, because I know by from geometry concept that this ellipse has the origin, the center in the origin. So what does it mean? It means that, uh, for example, if I take uh, this velocity in the joint space, I have, for example, this end effector is it nice or not? Well, let us reasoning relative to one other one. For example, I take this other point here. Okay, this is A, this is A. I take this other joint velocity, B. And for example, this is the end effector velocity. What is the difference between those two mappings that you can notice right now. A maps here, B maps here. Whatever they are, the direction, I don't care. But this is a sphere. So I have unitary radius. The length. Yes. The length is different. So now, I need to to pay a certain price to have uh, joint velocity. Because from the energetic point of view, I need to, to, to bring, let me say, all the motors at certain velocity. And uh, the efficiency is different according to the Jacobi, according to the direction where I want to go, according to the configuration. This is the strong 
interpretation or the manipulability ellipsoid. Velocity manipulability, uh, manipulability ellipsoid because we are going to see in next slides also the, the fourth one. But this is the very strong interpretation. The manipulability ellipsoid gives us an information on uh, how well the joint velocities are mapped into the end effect of the physics. Okay. Clearly, I have two different lengths starting from the same joint velocity. If I see the arm as a, a machine that converts my velocities from the joint space to the end effect, to the Cartesian space, to the end effect one, clearly an ellipsoid like that is somehow dangerous because if I want to go in that direction that's fine but if I want to go in that direction with the same joint velocity norm I mean I'm, I'm uh, wasting let me say the joint velocity okay because the end effect that I achieve is very small important to notice is also not only the, the direction and dimension that are given by you know the eigenvector second value of J J transpose are given by the matrices I, if I have the Jacobian I'm able to compute the direction and dimension of the semi-axis but also the volume is important the volume is related to something that uh, we already have seen. Do you remember when we saw the square root of the determinant of JJ transpose? if the determinant of a matrix is zero? Sir? It's not full rank. And it, that is not invertible. So the determinant of JJ transpose was a matrix to measure the distance from the kinematic singularity of the Jacob. It appears now that this is the volume of the velocity manipulability ellipsoid. It means that if my if, if my robot is close to a kinematic singularity, the volume that here is an area because it's a 2D representation, but other, otherwise it's an ellipsoid, the volume goes to zero. I have some direction where I cannot obtain any velocity. And this is consistent with the fact that I'm in a kinematic singularity, or close to a kinematic singularity. So the information of the kinematic singularity is here. I use it the Jacobian, so it's not surprising, let me say. Okay, example. This is a plot of the velocity manipulability ellipsis for a planar two link, only linear velocities and the end effect for a planar two link. Uh, graphically, the ellipses are, trans are um, translated so that the origin is at the end effect. Okay, this is just a graphical uh, uh, choice. What we can appreciate? Well, we can appreciate that this ellipse is changing a lot. It's changing directions of the semi-axis, it's changing length of the semi-axis. And then let us try to give an interpretation of this one. Let us start from uh, the almost stretched 
configuration. In this configuration, I'm close to the kinematic singularity. The kinematic singularity is totally scratched. And I know that I can only produce the vertical direction here instantaneously. I cannot produce the radial direction. And this is consistent to what here I'm uh, observing. This ellipse has an eccentricity that is in the tangential, I mean, is um, the semi-axis are large in the um, tangential direction and they're going to decrease in the radial direction and they will go to zero as long as the robot is totally stretched. Now, here, let's go on uh, with the theta two equal minus pi. I'm close to another kinematic singularity because I do know that the kinematic singularities are where theta two is uh, zero or pi, or minus pi, okay? And uh, the ellipse is providing this information to me. In the intermediate uh, configuration, I do have more round ellipse, okay, with uh, a smaller eccentricity. It means that uh, my robot, seen as uh, a velocity transformation machine, works quite well here, and uh, a little bit uh, less when it's uh, with theta two close to pi, or when it's with theta two close to zero. Now, this is an information that is very useful. For example, when you are going to design a new mechanical uh, structure for a robot, because you can make uh, numerical simulation, you can compute your Jacobian, and your Jacobian does not need masses. We haven't talked about masses and inertia yet, okay? We just are reasoning with the kinematic quantities with the David Artenberg table. You only need the David Artenberg table to compute the Jacobian. And you already have a very uh, important information on how well you are uh, designing your mechanical structure. Okay? The eigenvalues are those two, and we just see that uh, we have, uh, uh, um, this is in meters, uh, <laughs> why this is in meters, zero and two, I should check on the textbook uh, the way it is represented. Uh, zero and two represent the two kinematic singularities, of course, but I don't, I don't remember the, the interpretation of this one, okay? i see in the textbook and tell you later. Okay. Well, we studied that there is a, a duality. There is a duality between uh, the uh, velocity and the forces, so let us do the same with uh, the forces starting from a sphere where the torques are unitary. And then I know that tau is equal J transpose multiplied the end effect of generalized forces. And by a simple substitution, I obtain this one. And this is very nice because here, The velocity manipulability ellipsoid as a weight matrix that is the inverse of JJ transpose. Okay? Now I have JJ transpose. They are one the inverse of the other. Of course, now I don't start anymore with the Q dot transpose Q dot is equal one, but with J trans tau transpose tau equal one. I'm on a sphere of all the 
joint torques with the unitary vector. Okay? And what is the interpretation? Well, I open my textbook in a geometry and I see what are the properties of uh, a matrix and its inverse matrix. And I discover very interesting uh, properties. I discover that uh, the semi-axis direction are the same, but the, because, I mean, the, the eigenvectors are the same, but uh, the eigenvalues are reversed. It means that the, the direction of the ellipse are the same, but this is for the velocity, and we have uh, the opposite for the force. If a configuration is appropriate to transform a velocity in a certain direction, it is not appropriate to do the same with forces. Okay? Actually, it is the dual, so it is totally inappropriate. And this is very interesting. Look at this configuration. This is the configuration, the smallest one, okay, with the theta 2 close to pi, to minus pi in this case. In this configuration, it means that uh, if I want to apply a certain direction uh, here, this is very good configuration. If I want to push a wall, I put my that configuration. Okay, this is what we we do in a, in an intuitive way. We optimize the our Jacobian, and we apply forces in the, in the direction where our Jacobian exhibits a large semi-axis. This is what we do normally, okay? This is uh, just uh, a slide collecting the, the interpretation of the robot, as I told you, as a mechanical transformer of velocities and forces. Okay? And it's very important because if I do know this instrument of uh, the, 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 the force and velocity manipulability ellipsoids, I can make uh, a check of my mechanical design before any kind of uh, you know, construction or any kind of test, just to see if uh, it is appropriate for a certain design or not. Now, interesting enough, when we write, we put our arm, more or less all of us, in the same configuration. Okay? We don't write uh, in very strange configuration. We don't write in this way, for example. Or we don't write in this way with all the, with all the, the length stretched. We write, uh, here is written in Italian, but this is the, the plane of writing. We write in a way, more or less, to uh, have uh, a proper balance between the force ellipse and the velocity one. Okay. Because we need some force in order to push the pen on the sheet of paper. So we need to control, let me say control, I don't want to use the word control, but we need to have a proper, a proper mapping toward the force and we need some velocity to advance. It's a little bit clear the way we throw a weight in a horizontal way. If this is the arm, we usually make this movement if we want to throw something. In this way, our Jacobian is appropriate to hold the weight in the, in the vertical direction according to the gravity, and it is appropriate to transform the joint velocity to a linear velocity that is tangential here. So it's the direction where you're going to throw the weight. For a robot, we are going to do something similar in the sense that uh, 
we don't want to have a, a bell design where I do need to have a very large joint force to have uh, a small or relatively small end effect of linear force or a moment. Okay? So this is a, a very uh, powerful uh, instrument that is uh, required in order to study. If you want to design a robot, if the design is appropriate, if you already have a robot, if um, it is appropriate the configuration you decide to implement a certain uh, task. Okay. We, st we stop here, but...